this is the worst situation hospitals in Washington state have been in compared to any prior point during the pandemic. We are experiencing a crisis across our medical system and sadly we've now just reached 1 million Washingtonians who have been infected with COVID-19. COVID-19 hospitalizations, which are currently at an average of 1,800 for the past week, have now exceeded our previous high of 1,700 in September of 2021. We've seen about a 65% increase in COVID-19 cases in the past week, and we've averaged 226 new COVID hospitalizations each day this past week and roughly 12 to 20 COVID deaths. Of those in the hospital this past week, the average number of patients on a ventilator was 149, which was a 16% increase compared to last week's average of 129. There's also a significant shortage of staff and hospital beds. There are multiple factors that are converging to create this situation. And we're already in the midst of a sustained national staffing shortage. Similar to other job sectors, hospital staff are becoming infected with COVID-19 as a part of their daily lives, impacting their ability to work. And I would note that unlike other types of organizations, hospitals do not have the option to shut down operations. Just this morning, my daughter's school sent an announcement that the entire school was shut down due to sick staff and staff sick calls. Hospitals have to stay open to serve patients. They don't have this option. The surge of Omicron cases on top of hospitals already crowded with patients who do not need uh, hospital care is creating terrible delays of care and backups. Currently, hospitals have stopped all non-urgent procedures. A procedure or a surgery will only be performed if not performing it will lead to patient harm. This massive backlog is within the control of key state leaders to address. Across our system, hospitals are caring for hundreds of patients who do not need to be there. They should be in nursing homes or other long-term care settings or at home with home care support. And those patients, if those patients were moved out, we would have adequate space and staff to manage the surge of COVID-19 patients with our existing hospital resources. We've spoken previously about the steps that we think are necessary to alleviate this bottleneck, but to quickly recap a few, the state needs to assess patients faster. They, it needs to pay nursing homes more so they can retain staff. They need to clearly communicate about the availability of state su supported units for COVID positive long-term care patients and remove this nonsensical barrier that requires guardianship appointments prior to discharge for patients who can't make decisions for themselves but have loving family members literally at their side. We've been in dialogue with state leaders about other measures in addition to these to alleviate the situation. These include potentially deploying the National Guard to perform non-clinical work, further augmenting hospital and nursing home staff with state-supported contract uh, agency staff, and fixing this guardianship challenge that I just spoke to. We need these things to happen now, and we are asking for swift action. This is not a time for deliberating. We are working hard, really hard, to get life-saving care to patients who need it most. Western Washington is experiencing the worst of the surge at the moment, uh, but we expect to see upticks in Eastern Washington cases soon. Our hospitals have made a commitment to one another to level load across the system, and the Washington Medical Coordination Center is doing this actively with the hospitals, and right now is reserving movement of patients for those who are most in need of life-saving care. I want to emphasize that we are not yet at the point where crisis standards of care have been, have been declared by the state. In Washington state, crisis standards are triggered when we need to ration specific scarce resources like ventilators or ICU beds among patients who need them. This is a state level decision, not one for individual hospitals. We are, however, using contingency and crisis staffing models routinely at hospitals in Western Washington. This does not require action by the state. When we are doing this, it means that we are deviating from our normal staffing patterns due to a lack of available staff or rapid or unexpected increase in demand for services or both. Hospitals operating at these levels will be taking a number of steps to make sure all patients who need care can receive it. 
It may mean that patients experience longer times uh, waiting for care, that some services are not offered, and that includes routine COVID testing that's not a part of a hospital stay. Care teams may be caring for more patients than is normal, and staff exposed to COVID-19 or who were previously infected may return to work sooner than normal. However, hospitals operating in contingency and crisis staffing will also be following Washington State Department of Health and Centers for <coughs> Disease Control and Prevention guidance for this method of staffing and will take additional steps to keep staff and patients safe. These include additional testing of healthcare workers for COVID-19, immediately sending any staff member who tests positive home, ensuring eligible staff are fully vaccinated for COVID-19, offering boosters doses to all staff and ensuring that all staff wear masks or respirators and other personal protective equipment that's appropriate for the patient care area at all times. So with that as background, we have some specific requests for assistance from the public at this time. People who just need COVID-19 testing or who are not very ill should not be going to the emergency department for care. This includes seeking COVID-19 therapeutics unless people are having life-threatening symptoms. Please stay away from the hospital emergency department and discuss treatment options with primary care providers or an urgent care setting. We strongly encourage folks to get vaccinated and boosted. The sizable majority of hospital COVID patients are not vaccinated or they have only one shot and very, very few are boosted. Non-vaccinated citizens are two to six times more likely to contract COVID-19 and they are also 10 to 14 times more likely to be hospitalized compared to those who are vaccinated. Whenever possible, avoid gatherings with those outside your immediately family or, uh, or your pod of people especially if you're going to be indoors and unmasked. And please wear a face, medical face mask when in public, especially indoors. It's time to stop using cloth masks, cloth masks and start using medical masks. 